Hi, I'm Brenton Garren with ETF Trends and ETF Database. Today, I'm joined by Chris Humer, Senior Investment Strategist at FlexShares. Though US equity markets are positive for the year, many investors are concerned with volatility, events such as the US election, the surge in COVID cases, Brexit, China-US trade relations can have a dramatic impact on markets. So Chris, with interest rates being so low, are there alternative ways that investors can adjust their portfolio to better buffer against these shocks? Yeah, Brenton, uh, thanks for having me. And, and you actually make a really good point there. You know, typically, investors would look to de-risk their portfolios by simply reallocating to fixed income. You know, however, in this current environment, that may be less attractive uh, for a couple of reasons. One, as you pointed out, yields are low. And in our opinion, uh, future fixed income returns are, are most likely to be muted in, in the short term. Uh, so with that in mind, it, it's, it's a pretty expensive um, insurance policy. And, and additionally, uh, with all the, the quantitative easing and uh, the, the fiscal stimulus we've seen, uh, not just here in the U.S., but globally, uh, you, you've seen equity markets, particularly here in the U.S., continue to, 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 to go up. Uh, so with that in mind, you do have that opportunity cost. So um, what we've seen a lot of advisors look towards is turning to low volatility uh, solutions that offer um, downside protection while still uh, participating in, in the upside potential of equity markets. So kind of looking to de-risk by low volatility as, as opposed to um, fixed income. You know, the one other thing I would point out is though we definitely have a lot of these events in the short term, and, and obviously we've seen a lot of volatility here in 2020. This is a trend that we've seen coming and playing out over the last several years. If you go back and look pre the global financial crisis and look for spikes in, in, in the VIX, we essentially saw less than one volatility spike per year uh, leading up to the global uh, financial crisis. Since the global financial crisis, we have experienced a six-fold increase in volatility spikes. So you're seeing much, much more of these spikes happening. Not only that, but the volatility sp uh, spikes are occurring much more frequently on uh, on down down days as opposed to up days. You know, if if you you look at that in context over the last two decades. Uh, there's been a 34% increase in the asymmetric spikes where they're happening more, obviously, to the downside than the upside. Great. Well, with all that being said, FlexShares has paired a low volatility approach with your quality factor. Can you tell us a bit about the rationale behind that and how it may benefit investors? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we like to pair quality with low volatility for, for two reasons. First is that we find that the poorest quality companies also tend to be the most volatile. So by eliminating the poorest 20% of, uh, of, of companies based on quality, basically looking at the financial health of the company through their profitability, um, their aggressiveness around capital expenditures and, and capital financing decisions, as well as their cash flow levels. Uh, by eliminating the poorest companies across the board, across all sectors, what you're doing is you're giving yourself a, a way to, to eliminate a lot of what we've seen from the more, more volatile histor companies historically. Secondly, um, low volatility strategies, when the market outperforms and you've seen those outside up market days, low volatility because of defensive nature tends to underperform by pairing it with quality, uh, it gives us a much better upside capture than if we were just looking at low volatility alone. And finally, in your conversations with advisors and institutional clients, how have they been implementing a low volatility approach in their portfolios? Yeah, 
you know, what we're saying is when we talk to clients about uh, our quality, low volatility products, QLV, QLVD for the developed markets and QLVE for the emerging markets. Uh, what we're seeing is they're using it twofold as part of adjusting their core portfolio or as their full core portfolio. So as they go to de-risk, they're essentially taking some of that equity risk and instead of lowering the equity risk and moving to fixed income, they're simply lowering their beta exposure and their, their volatility exposure. Uh, and that's been something that's been helpful for them in 2020. Great. Well, Chris, this has been very informative as always. We appreciate your time and look forward to catching up again soon. Thanks, Brenton. Thanks for having me.